In this video, we're going to take a look at using partial fractions with the binomial expansion. So we can use partial fractions to simplify more complicated expressions. And all we're going to do here is run through one practice question. So we've got the function f of x here, which is equal to this algebraic fraction. We're told that f of x can be expressed in this form here. So notice this form here is the partial fraction decomposition then for this algebraic fraction. And for the first part then, part A, we just want to find the values of A and B. So for part A then, like we said, we're looking to find the values of A and B here. So what I notice then is if we have 5x plus 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 1, and we're told we can split that into partial fractions, and what that means is 5x plus 1 all over x plus 1, times x minus 1, that must be identical then, to a over x plus 1, plus b over x minus 1. Okay, just standard stuff to begin with there for partial fractions. So what I need to do now is get this right hand side here over a common denominator. So if we do that here, we're going to get a lots of x minus 1, We'll have b lots of x plus 1 and this here would be over x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. So now that we've got this over a common denominator here, what that means then is this numerator here must be identical to this numerator here. So therefore, what I can see then is a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 1 that must be identical then to 5x plus 1 and from here then all we're going to do now is substitute values of x in here so how do we choose the values of x that we're going to substitute but what I want to do is eliminate one of these constants here so I want to eliminate a or b so for example, if I let x equal say 1 here, let's do it over here. If I let x equal 1, what would happen here? Well, I'd get a times 1 minus 1, so that would be 0. So a times 0 is 0. So this term here would disappear, okay? And once that disappears then, what that allows me to do is solve for the remaining constants. So in other words, we can solve for b then. So this would be 0. We then get b times 1 plus 1, so in other words I'm going to get 2b here, so we get 2b is equal to, well 5 times 1 is 5, plus the 1 giving me 6 there. So 2b equals 6, and therefore b is equal to 6 divided by 2, giving me 3. Okay, so we found the value of b there, so now we need to substitute another value of x in here to eliminate um, b. So for example, if I let x equal minus 1 here, then what you'll hopefully notice is b would now disappear because minus 1 plus 1 is 0, b times 0 is 0, okay? And from there then we can go on to solve for a. So I'm going to get a, I've got minus 1, minus 1, so in other words I get minus 2a. I have minus 2a, that would be equal then to 5 times minus 1, so that's minus 5, plus the 1, giving us minus 4. And then we can finally find a by dividing both sides by minus 2. So minus 4 divided by minus 2, and that gives us a equals 2 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to part a. So if you couldn't find the values of a and b, just make a note of those here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly clear the screen so we have enough room for part b. So for part b then, it says hence or otherwise find the series expansion of f of x in ascending powers of x up to and including the term in x squared. So here we need to use the binomial expansion now for f of x. So for f of x then, let's just rewrite that in its partial fraction decomposition. So f of x is equal. So what do we get for a again? Well we've got 2 for a, so that's 2 over x plus 1. So 2 over x plus 1, for b we got 3, so that's plus 3. 
over x minus 1. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this in index notation. So this is the same then as two lots of x plus 1 to the power of minus 1. I'm doing the same then for this fraction here. We get three lots of x minus 1 to the power of minus 1. So from here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the binomial expansion two times. So let me use a different color here to highlight this. So for this expansion here, we'll do this in blue. Okay, that corresponds to this fraction here. And then for this one here, let's do that in a different color. Let's do that in, say, green here. Okay, and that corresponds to that expansion. Okay, so two individual expansions here. So then to find the series expansion of f of x, we'll just simply add those two individual expansions together. So let's start with the blue expansion here. So two lots of x plus 1 to the power of minus 1. So here, because n is a negative number, we now need to use the second year result then for the binomial expansion. So what we're going to use here, right up here. So what I've got then is 1 plus x to the power of m. 1 plus x to the power of n. <coughs> Then this is equal to 1 plus n times x, so nx there. Now we're only, going, we're only going up to the term in x squared. So here I'm going to get n times n minus 1. That'll be over 2 factorial. So that's going to be the same as 2, 2 times 1, but I'll write as 2 factorial. And then we times this here by x squared. Okay, we're going to room a little bit there. Don't forget this result is in your formula book if you just want to have a look at that. Um, but that's what we're going to use here to find these individual expansions. So, like we said, we'll do this one in blue here, just so you can see it in full. <clears throat> so, to begin with then, two lots of x plus 1 to the power of minus 1. So, what I'm actually doing here is I'm using the expansion on this part only. All I'm going to do then at the very end is times everything through by 2. So, what I've got here is two lots of x plus 1. Power of minus 1, like so. So that would be two lots then. So now using the expansion here for x plus 1 to the power of minus 1, because this is positive 1 here, we can go straight into using this result then. Don't forget if this isn't 1. So for example, if that was 2, we'd have to factor a 2 out. If it was 3, we'd have to factor a 3 out. So on and so on. But because it's 1, we can go straight into using this result then. So I'm going to get 1. Then we've got n times x. So n here is minus 1 x then is simply positive x here, so it just corresponds to whatever this x value is inside the bracket. So minus 1 times x. And then what we've got here is n times n minus 1. So that's going to be plus minus 1 times minus 2. That's all over 2 factorial, so that's the same as 2 times 1, which is 2. And then we times that by x squared here, which in this case would be... Um, x squared because it's just x if it was 2x we'd do 2x all squared so on and so on but like we said it's just simply x so it's going to be x squared like so so now we'll close these brackets here but then we simplify everything inside the square brackets here we get two lots can't do anything with the one minus one times x is minus x there i've then got minus one times minus two so that's positive two Divide that by 2, we get 1, times that by x squared, and we simply get plus x squared there. Okay, so now we times everything through by 2. What do we have here then? I've got 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 times minus x, which is minus 2x. And then 2 times positive x squared, I get plus 2x squared. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the first expansion there. That's for... 2 over x plus 1, so that's that one complete. We'll give it a little tick there just so we know we've completed that one. So now what I need to do is find this expansion here. So if we do that one in green, we'll do it underneath here as well. So three lots of x minus 1 to the power of minus 1. So what I've got here then is three lots of x minus 1 to the power of minus 1. Now, hopefully you notice we can't go straight into the expansion here because it's not positive 1, it's minus 1. 
So what that means is we now need to factor minus one out of the bracket here. We're going to get three lots of minus one. And don't forget this number that we factor out, we have to raise that to this power here, n, which in this case is the power of minus one. Now, minus one to the power of minus one is just minus one. So that won't change anything. So I've got three lots of minus one times by x minus one to the power of minus one. Okay. So obviously three times minus one, that's the same as minus three. So here, if I do it underneath, I've got minus three lots of, oh, sorry, that would change as well. So let me just go back a line here. Let's just re-correct that. So I factored the minus one out here. So obviously what would happen then is the signs inside would change. So it'll just flip in other words. So that minus one becomes positive one. And then the X here would be minus X. Okay, like so. So I nearly made a very silly mistake there. So now that we've corrected that here, we can now use the binomial expansion result here. Okay, so we've got minus three lots of one minus X to the power of minus one. So here we're going to get minus three lots. I'm going to get one. We've then got n times x here. So n is minus one. So plus minus one. We then times it by x here. And be very careful. In this case, x is actually minus x. Don't forget we include the same sign here. So minus one times minus x there. And then finally for the term in x squared, we've got n times n minus one. That's going to be minus one times minus two. That's all over two factorial, which is two. And then we times it by x squared. So in this case here, x is actually minus x. That's going to be minus x all squared. Like so. Okay. So what I need to do here now is simplify everything inside the square bracket. So I'm going to get minus three lots of one. Can't do anything with that. Minus one times minus x, that would be positive x there. We've then got minus one times minus two, so that's going to be positive two. Divide that by two and we get one. Minus x squared, that would be positive x squared. So what I'm going to get then is plus x squared. Okay, hopefully nice and straightforward there. And then finally to finish with for this expansion here, all I need to do now is times three by the minus three here on the outside. And in that case, then we get minus three times one, which is minus three, minus three times x, which is minus three x. And then finally, minus three times x squared, giving us minus three x squared there. Okay. So that's this expansion complete here. So we've got everything that we need now. So to finish with here, to find the series expansion of f of x, what I'm going to do now is take this expansion here and then add it with this expansion here. Okay, so let me do that in the original pen color. So therefore, what I've got then is two over x plus one plus three over x minus one that would be equal then in this case to two minus two x plus two x squared. And then we add this one here as well. So what I'll do is I'll put these in brackets just so you can see the clear difference then. So 2 minus 2x two um, plus 2x squared. And then we add here this expansion as well. So it's just the sum of the individual expansions. I've got minus 3, minus 3x three and minus 3x squared. Okay. So now we simplify this here. Well, 2 minus 3, that's minus 1. Minus 2x plus minus 3x, that's the same as minus 2x minus 3x, giving me minus 5x there. And then finally, 2x squared plus minus 3x squared, that would give me minus x squared there. Okay. And there we have it. That would be the series expansion then of f of x in ascending powers of x up to and including the term in x squared. Now, it doesn't ask for it in this question, but like we've already seen, these series here are only valid based on certain conditions for x. Okay. So, how do we determine here the range of values for which this expansion is valid? 
Well, that depends then on the actual individual um, expansion. So, for example, this expansion here, this is kind of a bad example in a way because both of these are going to be valid then um, for when, put it up here, valid when mod x is less than 1. Okay, so in other words, when x is between minus 1 and 1. And that applies to both of these here. Okay. But if you just consider another example here. So let me do it in orange. Let's say this one here was valid when mod x is less than 2. Okay, so let's say we had one that was valid when mod x is less than 2. And the other one is valid when mod x is, let's say, less than a half. Okay. So this one here is valid between minus 2 and 2. So I think the easiest way to kind of see this here is with a number line. Sounds very basic, but I think it illustrates it quite nicely. So I've got my number line here. So this one, like we said, is valid between minus 2 and 2. So let's say this is minus 3 here. And let's say positive 3. Then minus 2 to 2, that would say be here to here. Okay, this is, you know, a very rough diagram, but just to kind of help illustrate this. So it's valid for x being between minus 2 and 2. However, the second expansion is valid when x is between minus a half and a half, which would be, say, let's do that in a different color. That would be, say, here to here. Okay, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. So clearly in this case, then, the full expansion will only be valid when mod x is less than a half, because clearly it can't be this one here because it would fall outside the range then of this expansion here. So we'll see an example of that in the exam revision video for the binomial expansion then for the second year material. And um, that's a very quick overview then of validity for um, the binomial expansion when we're working with partial fractions. Okay. But there we have it. So that's the solution there. Okay. To this practice question. That brings the end of this video then on using partial fractions with the binomial expansion.